which I drove Jews from Vienna, Moravia, and Bohemia in the winter of 1939. You will hear evidence of the theft of the property of the deportees, how they were left destitute in the zone, the brutal treatment to which they were subjected, and the expulsion of a number of them eastward beyond the Soviet borders with the threat that any attempting to get back would be killed. Eichmann personally dealt with the Nisko expulsions, even spending a number of days in the Nisko area. The project was finally abandoned because of the opposition of the governor of Poland, Hans Frank, who persuaded Goering that the project was upsetting the German war effort. The Nisko refugees later met their deaths in the Belsatz extermination camp. The attack on the Soviet Union on June 22, 1941 and America's entry into the war on the side of the Allies some months later, in December of the same year, these were the turning points in the development of the plans for extermination. True, the idea had already been explicitly mentioned. We shall present to the court the minutes of a meeting called by Heydrich on September the 21st, 1939, in which Eichmann took part alongside other high SS officers, in which ways of dealing with Jews in the areas of conquered Poland were summarized. That very day, Heydrich issued instructions to all the special mission groups, Einsatzgruppen of the SS, that went along with the army and constituted units for special security missions. Their function was designated by Heydrich. After a warning that all his instructions were top secret, Heydrich went on to distinguish between the long-range solution of the Jewish problem, meaning by this, without any doubt, their actual extermination, and immediate steps to be taken against them. The Jews were to be expelled from the countryside, and concentrated in the cities near railway junction points and councils of elders were to be set up who would be made responsible for marshalling the Jews. As a pretext for these measures, Heydrich suggested it should be claimed that the Jews had been taking part in irregular activities and robberies. The severest punishment was to be inflicted for violation of the order to move into the concentration centers. According to the minutes of that meeting, Heydrich issued instructions that every judgment against violators in the zones of conquest that was not a death sentence should be reported to him personally. Orders were given to seize Jewish enterprises, to forbid Jews to change their places of residence, and to impose a curfew. Heydrich demanded regular reports on the operations carried out according to his instructions, concluding with these words. Towards the achievement of the goals indicated, I order the immediate mobilizing of all the forces of the security police and security services. The chiefs of the Einsatzgruppen active in the same neighborhood will keep in close touch with one another so that all the possible areas will be completely and immediately covered by the network. We shall see later, when we deal with the tragedy of European Jewry, how the conquerors interpreted these instructions, the brutality, murder and pillage that came in their wake. But it was only as the invasion of the Soviet Union drew nearer that the Germans went over to the final solution in the new sense, that is, utter physical extermination.
On July the 31st, 1941, Goering instructed Heydrich as follows. I quote, In order to complete the mission imposed on you, in the order of January 24, 1939, to solve the problem of the Jews by means of emigration or evacuation in the most suitable way in the circumstances leading to a possible solution, I am here with instructing you to make all the necessary organizational, practical, and material preparations for a comprehensive solution of the Jewish question within the German area of influence in Europe. In so far as the other central authorities are concerned, they are to cooperate. I hereby instruct you further to submit to me soon a general plan, Gesamtentwurf, with respect to organizational, practical, and material means necessary for the execution of the desired final solution and losing of the Jewish question. Thus, the official signal was given. Heydrich was appointed to plan the extermination and he, on his part, appointed for the planning and execution a cruel and fanatical man, implacable in his enmity, this evil Eichmann. As a preparation for the final solution, fresh occupation units had already begun mass murders of Jews in zones from which the Red Army had retreated in the summer and autumn of 1941. We shall go into these actions in a later section. Partial and mass expulsions towards the east had already been carried out earlier from within Germany proper. But at that time, the work of general planning was being done in Berlin. In August 1941, Eichmann wrote to his foreign office that it would be advisable to prevent further immigration. And I quote, in the light of preparations for the final solution of the problem of European Jewry. These preparations of his were completed before November of that year, since already then he wrote in the same connection about the imminent final solution, I quote. That summer, we shall find Eichmann in Auschwitz, arranging with Rudolf Hess the various technical details and choosing the spot for the erection of the extermination apparatus. In the autumn of that year, Eichmann flew to Kiev to report to Himmler. Himmler seems to have received a suitably satisfactory report since, on October 27, 1941, he issued a decree forbidding an emigration of Jews from the areas of German rule. Two days earlier, on October 25, 1941, an official in the Ministry for the Occupied Territories wrote that an agreement had been reached with Eichmann to use gas chambers for the solution of the Jewish people. Thus we meet the plans and they had been formulated, the beans had been determined instead of Jewish immigration they would be murdered. From then onwards, it was the job of the head of the Jewish section of the Gestapo to direct in a suitable fashion the planning of other officers of the Reich according to the detailed master plan that had already been sketched in September 1939. 
On September 15, 1941, the Q sent along for Hydra's signature instructions applying to Germany and the occupied zones requiring the introduction of the Jewish wedge, which had been imposed some time before in the Eastern occupation zones. Every Jew would have to wear on the left side of his breast a special, easily recognizable sign. The Jewish authorities themselves would have to supply the badge of shame. A ban was imposed on Jews leaving their places of residence and using transportation with some clearly specified exceptions. But there were also problems. Rosenberg, Minister for the Occupied Territories, issued a series of directives for the occupation authorities in the areas under his jurisdiction, which included the Baltic countries, East Poland, and parts of the Soviet Union. These instructions were called the Braune Mappe, the Brown Portfolio and included a chapter relating to the Jews containing severe repressive provisions, but not extermination. The problem of the Jews, the Brown and Mappe said, will find a solution in the whole of Europe at the end of the war. When a draft of the Brown portfolio came to Heidrich's attention, he reacted with a highly significant letter dated January 10, 1942. He did not agree with Rosenberg's proposals. He insisted that the special instructions already issued, which included complete extermination as we know, be taken into account. And I quote, in view of the fundamental lines of policy for dealing with the Jewish problem as formulated by the Reich Central Security Office in charge, SS Sturmbannführer Eichmann, I must ask you to reprint your instructions." Unquote. In the same month, Heidel sent on to Rosenberg the revisions suggested by Eichmann. Because of the importance of this document, I shall quote from it at length. All measures in connection with the Jewish question in the occupied territories in the East are to be considered from the point of view that the Jewish question must be generally solved for the whole of Europe. Hence, such measures in the occupied territories in the East as contribute towards the final solution of the Jewish question, thereby the liquidation of Jewry must in no way be hindered. Ausscheidung des Judentums. In the occupied territories, in the East in particular, efforts are to be made to bring about a most immediate solution of the Jewish question. Any measures of the local population against the Jews are therefore not to be hindered, so long as measures that will contribute to the liquidation of Jewry have not yet been taken, the local Jews are to be strictly separated from the rest of the population. Free movement is to be immediately stopped for all Jews. Transfer of Jews to ghettos is to be carried out. The watching of the boundaries between the ghetto and the outside world is the affair of the police. The measures that contribute to the liquidation of jewelry are to be carried out without any consideration for economic needs. All Jewish property is to be registered. Transfer to, transfers of property by Jews are to be prevented." Unquote. But the matters were not arranged by mere exchange of letters. Frank, Frank, the Governor General of Occupied Poland, tried to deal with Jewish affairs in his own way and to take the matter out of the Gestapo's hands. In other areas, too, difficulties arose. Eichmann therefore proposed that a meeting be called of the senior central officials who might be considered suitable to carry out the plan of slaughter. 
and Heidrich agreed. It was Eichmann who made all the preparations for this conference, from the preparation of all the factual material to the drafting of the invitations. And those invited were asked to take time off from their duties, and I quote, in view of the exceptional importance of the problems and of the need to arrive at a unified point of view. <coughs> the conference took place on January 20, 1942, in the suburb of Wannsee, near Berlin. The participants were the leading personalities, with the rank of Director General of the Ministries for the Occupied Territories in the East, the Interior, Law, Foreign Affairs, Economics, Race and Settlement. Representatives of the party, RSHA, and the Reichskanzlei, and, of course, Adolf Eichmann. Heydrich delivered the central speech according to the data supplied by the accused. He recalled Goering's order and established at the outset, in order to prevent any doubts, that it was his ministry that was centrally responsible for the execution of the final solution everywhere without any geographical limitations. He mentioned the practical experiments that had been carried out in the East, the lessons from which were of the utmost importance for the final solution. After having briefly outlined the steps taken thus far, in quotes, in the battle against this enemy, unquote, for the purpose of forcing the Jews out of the areas in which the German people lived and which constituted its Lebensraum, he stated that a halt had been called to this emigration at the order of Himmler, and it now would begin to further what to do with children of mixed marriages. As I have already indicated, this problem troubled the executors of the extermination. The principle was established that children of mixed marriages of the first degree, namely which one of the parents was Jewish, would be classified as full Jews, excluding men who had married German women and had children, or those with respect to whom there were exceptional circumstances, and for whom the higher institutions of the party and the state had specially interceded, that such circumstances were to be examined with great care. The exceptional cases were to be permitted to stay in Germany on condition that they gave their consent to their own sterilization. Instructions were also given with respect to children of mixed marriages of the second degree, mixed couples themselves, and various categories of borderline cases. The Economics Ministry asked that for the time being, Jews working in vital war industries should not be evacuated, and Heydrich agreed. Dr. Bühler, representative of the Polish uh, general government, had noticed that there the final solution had already begun. As the problem be solved with all possible dispatch, he declared the majority of the Jews in this region, about two and a half million, were not capable of work at all. He agreed that the implementation of the final solution be put into the hands of the Gestapo and was full support by the authorities of the general government. He asked only for the work to begin as well as possible. Later, opinions were exchanged on quote, the various means connected with the possibilities of a solution, unquote. and the representatives of the government of the eastern areas, like the Polish general government representatives, the preparations already made in these areas be completed, but without stirring up panic among the population. This was after giving a 